Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend in the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Guest Thursday, and this is uh, uh, part two with uh, a good friend, Noel, from uh, his mansion out in uh, New Hampshire, a friend of uh, Kathy's. And uh, last time, if you haven't uh, listened to it, uh, please go back and listen to part one, where she shares her own uh, journey of uh, a life that had discouragement, um, where she was invited to just go, t- go talk to God by a professor. Mm. And she actually did. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, and then God uh, walked her uh, through teaching her to trust him and who he really was. Uh, and she was completely transformed and then, uh, you know, was led uh, by God to uh, her assignments. And so we're excited. Thank you, Noelle. And thank you for sharing that, you know, last time. And I think when we left last time, Kathy, you were uh, suggesting that we have her share a story. Why don't you go ahead and set it up and then we'll have Noel uh, kind of go into it and, and walk us through uh, how this all uh, came about. Yeah, this story does not need a big setup. It is incredible. It's one of my favorites. Um, and it is the story of how God led her to um, to start a house of prayer in New Hampshire, actually, and then truly his supernatural work every step of the way. I have heard this story multiple times now. I have uh, had her repeat it to my daughter and my daughter-in-law. Anybody that, that can hear this story, I think they need to hear it because it's such an incredible example of seeking the voice of God, listening, hearing it, and stepping out on faith and trusting that you hear, and then him delivering as only he can. So beautiful example that goes with our whole segment on hearing God's voice. So Noel, from there, just share it and don't leave the details out. I always say God is in the details and the details in this one are fantastic. (laughs) Yeah, thank you, Kathy and Rich, again, for this opportunity just to get to tell, yeah, tell you what what the Lord did. The Lord did this every step of the way. So there was a building in the town over and I drive by it every day, you know, to go to and from town. And it has had restaurants in it throughout my, you know, 10 years of being here, probably seven or eight restaurants in and out failing frequently. And, but it's a beautiful brick building and I would drive by it. And once again, the sign restaurant for lease with the phone number was up on the window. And I was driving by it this one day and saw the sign. I was like, huh, wonder what'll go in there next. You know, what kind of food this time? And all of a sudden I heard sensed in my spirit, however you want to describe it. I heard call the number. And I was like, well, that. That doesn't make sense. So I'm going to ignore that. Uh, <laughs> so kept driving. So with you, so with you, God, uh, we're we're getting a pattern here. God saying, uh, "No, daughter, I want uh, don't ignore. <laughs> no, don't ignore that. No, please don't ignore." That. <laughs> yeah. He's extremely merciful to yeah, me, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> and very gracious. Yes, uh, yes. That's my tendency is to ignore, and then he reminds me. So I drove by it again the next day. Same thing happened. Call the number. Mm. I'm like, I don't want to open a restaurant and I have no money. <laughs> so yeah, but once again, we call that the yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't make sense. I, I, I mean, I ignored this for, it must have been a couple of weeks. Mm. And then I'd be at home with my kids though. And I, the, the building would start coming to my mind and I'd hear, call the number. And I was like, oh man, now I gotta ask him about it. So I eventually I was like, okay, is this you, Lord? What, why would I call this number? Uh, what would it be for? And I just kept hearing for prayer, for prayer. That's mm. all I got, mm. that's all I got. So I still kept, I just didn't, I put it off. I was like, this is crazy. 
I'm going to put it off. So eventually then, though, either he just gave me supernatural courage or I just got up the gumption or was annoyed and tired of hearing this over and over. <laughs> um, and so I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to call. Who cares? I'll talk to a person. I'll never meet them. It won't matter. You know, I'll never hear from them again. So I, I called the number and uh, a gentleman answers. And I said, I see you have a restaurant for lease. And he said, yes, I do. And he gave me all the info on it. He said, are you interested? I said, well, I don't want to open a restaurant. And he paused and he was like, okay. I said, and I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a long pause at that point. And he said, uh, okay. I said, but would you be open to it being used for something until you get a renter? And he said, ah, that depends. Like, what would it be used for? And I said, the only thing I had kept hearing, I said, uh, for prayer. And shockingly, I didn't get hung up on. He said, let's meet next week. Mm. So we set up a time to meet the next week. I was shocked and I was all nervous. I remember, you know, the next week, the night before, I had not ever really experienced that kind of spiritual battle. I mean, I was tormented all night with accusations of how foolish I was. And, you know, the, the next morning I woke up and I, you know, I prayed through it and I went to sleep and then I woke up and I was like, okay, whatever, I'll meet this person. I'll look foolish. It's not a big deal. I'll never see him again. I'm going to go. I'm going to follow you, Lord. This is what you want me to do. So I went, I met with him. He was a very kind guy, but he's a businessman. You know, he had about two seconds to talk to me. So he brings me inside, shows me around. It was this beautiful, you know, these wood floors, brick walls. And uh, he was like looking around. He's like, okay, so what do you want to use this for again? And I said, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I said, <laughs> but just as a place for people to come and I'd probably have like coffee and water and couches and people could just come and connect and pray together. And he's like, huh, okay, well, do you think there's a market for that? <laughs> I said, that is a valid question. <laughs> um, I said, I don't think there's necessarily a market for it. I said, but I do think it's a need. I think that there's a lot of people who want to connect to the Lord and want to explore that connection. But if you put a sign on the door of a church that says prayer meeting tonight, only people who are comfortable going into a church will go to it. So I'm hoping it'll be a more neutral space. Mm. And you know, I just threw it out there and he is walking around thinking, you know, he's thinking hard and eventually he walks over to me and he says, all right, how much would you use it for? And I said, I, I mean, I can only use it like one time a week, like one night a week. So that that's all. And he said, all right, you can use it. And I said, really? <laughs> he said, yeah. And I said, okay, well, how much would it be? You know, it would be once a week you know, how much would that be a month? And he thought, and he said, mm, nothing. And I was like, what? <laughs> he was like, yeah, I'm not looking to get rich off this place. Like, it sounds like it'll be good for the community. Why not? <laughs> so he said, but you have to promise me you will leave once I get a renter. And I said, you have my word, you know, I will leave if, once you get a renter. And he said, all right. So he said, let's set up a time next week to talk details. So I left that being like, what is happening? What did I just <laughs> even sign up for, you know? And uh, is there a way out? Can I get off this train? <laughs> you know? And uh, so then I met with him the next week, you know, and uh, and uh, he was like, okay, here's the number of the town newspaper. You can put it in the newspaper. He took me over to the Chamber of Commerce, met, you know, was like, hey, this is Noelle. This is what she wants to do. Can you put it on your calendar? And uh, the man was very kind and was like, sure, sounds like it'd be good for the community. <laughs> and uh, but then he said the the owner did say to me, he said, well, I have to call the town, the other town's person and the building inspector. And I don't know what they're going to think of it. And I said, OK. And within an hour, he calls me back. And he's like, well, they both were on board, which wow. is surprising to me. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was like, huh, OK, yeah. So then, you know, it comes time to set a date so I set a date for it was like Friday June 23rd that it would first be open and 
I'm asking the Lord, Lord, I don't have anything to put in this space. Again, do you remember? <laughs> I have no money. <laughs> what am I going to do? Like furniture and everything. And I just kept hearing, I'm going to tell you each step and I'm going to provide everything. Uh, and so it would be things like I'd get emails from people. Hey, I've got a couch. Do you need a couch mm. by any chance for anything? Um, you know, this one day I was driving down the road and I was like, I really need two comfortable chairs, Lord, two comfortable chairs would be really great. And I heard him say, turn in here. And I look to my right and it's Ollie's treasure shop, which is a consignment shop. And I go in there and they rarely have furniture right in the front of the, like never do they have furniture in the front of the store. I walk in and right there are two comfortable chairs. Mm. And I just look at the owner and I say, how much for these two chairs? And she's like, uh, 20. And I was like, I'll take them. That was the most <laughs> I spent on anything. Mm. And and just things kept coming my way. So I was asking the Lord, you know, what is your heart for this space? You know, what what should I call it? And I just kept getting this picture of the father resting in the home, in a home and beckoning his children to come talk to him and sit on his lap and talk to him. So, right. Mm. So I felt led to call it the living room. So that's what mm. it was called. And it opened on June 23rd and it, it, you know, it, the first night was beautiful. I mean, every night thereafter was really cool. You know, different people would come in. Um, it'd be different every time, every Friday afternoon, I'd have all this angst and anxiety of like, what am I doing? You know? And the Lord would just say, all you got to do is open it and I will do the rest. And so did that every Friday night. Eventually this little community started to join of people who had never met each other, but lived in the same town, all went to different churches. You know, some went to a house church, um, but they just loved it. And so, so many people would come and be like, I'm only staying 20 minutes and they'd stay for two hours, you know? Um, and it's very organic. You know, I set up one kind of quiet room with stations, different ways to engage in prayer, kind of solo and by yourself. And then there was kind of a communal room for people to just come. They didn't have to pray. If they didn't want to pray, they could just come and get coffee and relax. And then there was a back room for people who really wanted to go after it together and pray together. You know, I can remember at one point there was some, there was a group of people from five or six different churches there who had never met, who were just seeking the Lord mm -hmm. uh, together. And uh, so about a month and a half into this, uh, maybe in July or or August, I forget when, I was approached by this amazing, godly, um, kind couple who wanted to hear the story. They had heard a little bit about it and wanted to hear the story of how it came to be. And so I met with them and, and got to share it with them. And at the end, they said, we really feel led that the Lord wants us to support this. So we will lease this place for you if you want to make it permanent, which was shocking. <laughs> um, and I said, I will pray about that. Wow. Thank you. You know, so I went to prayer over it. Um, and they and weren't I, normally in town, right? Weren't they? They live in they Florida. Visiting? Yes. They were visiting <laughs> and they live in Florida. And um, yeah, just a very, you know, a couple who really values prayer and love the Lord. And um, so I really went to prayer over it then, you know, cause I was thinking I'm just doing this until he gets a renter. You know, I don't know if this is going to be permanent and then this happens. And so I said, Lord, do you want me to do this? Do you want me to take them up on this offer? And I just kept hearing him say, no, this is not the permanent space. Just, just ride this out, ride mm. this space out. Mm. So I did. And around October, I got an email from the owner saying, Hey, there are some people who are interested in leasing. So um, just wanted to let you know, which was really kind of him. So I went to prayer hard again. And I said, Lord, are you sure? Do you want me to take them up on this offer right now? And I just kept hearing, no, there's another permanent space, but it's not this, let this go. So I did, and I got the call. I needed to get my stuff out. So I, all, now by this time I've accumulated all these couches, chairs, <laughs> furniture, <laughs> with, with nowhere to put them. Yeah, that's right. The, and, the good and, news is you have it. The bad news is you have it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. 
so at this point, you know, I'm not entirely sure that, <clears throat> that there is another space yet. I don't have it. The Lord hasn't led me to it yet. So I said, Lord, I'm going to put this stuff in a storage space. And I found a really cheap storage space. This is one of those details, Kathy. Yes, I found a very I love cheap, it. cheap storage space that would be cheap for two months. But starting December 1st, December 1st, it would go up a ton. And I wouldn't be able to afford it. So I said, Lord, if there is a space, would you help me find it by December 1st? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, all my regulars came. They helped me put everything in the storage space. And then at that point, I'm getting texts from all my regulars, right? They're like, there's this place for lease. There's this place for lease. There's this place for lease, which was very kind. And I, you know, went and visited several spaces. And I asked the Lord two, two things. I said, one, when I enter the space, would you make it so clear that it's the place you want? Make it so clear in my spirit. And it'd be really awesome if it had four rooms. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Um so then, you know, I'm looking, looking, not finding anything. And I asked the Lord, where do you want me to look? And I kept hearing Henniker, which is another town close by. Something about it being within walking distance of New England College in that mm. town. Mm. And so I said, OK, you know, I'll look. I couldn't find anything. One day, this little office space pops up online and I sensed I should go look at it. So I called the owner, called the number. And uh, we set up a time. This was a Monday. We set up a time to, for me to go see it on Friday morning. And then Thursday morning rolls around. And I kept getting the sense, go today. Call the owner and ask if you can go today. So I called. And he, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually here right now. You can come if you want. So I get my kids in the car. We go. And I see the office space. It was a beautiful office building, tons of little offices inside, but it wasn't right at all. Like it, you walk in and there's the, the office space that was for lease was way up on the second floor. There was no elevator. It was very inaccessible. And I just really get a, got a sense that it should be accessible. And it was about a mile away from the college. So I left, I kind of said, thank you so much, you know, for letting me see it. He was very kind. And I left feeling a little confused because I was like, Lord, I thought you really wanted me to go see this today. So I'm driving towards the center of town and I said, okay, Shepard, lead me. Where should I look? Thinking maybe he would tell me within the next couple days or the next couple weeks, but immediately I heard, go to Daniel's. Daniel's is this little restaurant right on Main Street in the middle of the town, right on the same street same street where you know the pharmacy is and the pizza shop is you know and, and a bunch of college housing is mm -hmm. and so I drive up I'm like okay so I drive up to Daniel's and I'm looking around looking around there's no sign anywhere you know uh so I'm like feeling a little foolish and I'm like okay what do I do now and I heard drive around back drive around back so I drive around the back of the building and it's right by this, the Conte Cook River. And I, once again, I drive down to the behind where Daniel's is. And I'm looking and looking and looking. No signs, nothing to tell me there's anything for lease there or any open spot whatsoever. So now I'm feeling really foolish. I'm like, no, I'll just go home. Just go home. <laughs> so I'm turning the van, my van around. And right as I'm turning my van around, a gentleman walks out the back door right next to my car. And I look at him. And I, I, I see and recognize that he's the owner of Daniel's. I've never met him personally, but I've seen him in the restaurant when I've gone to eat there before. And I just kind of look at him and I was about to drive away and I heard, talk to him. Mm. So I <laughs> rolled down my window <laughs> and I say, hi, sir. Are you the <laughs> owner? Are you the owner of Daniel's? And he said, yeah, I am. And I said, okay, this is going to sound funny maybe, but is there any office space or space for lease or for rent that's open or somewhere around here? And his eyes got really big and he was like, yeah, I have an office space, but I haven't even put it up for lease yet. And I said, okay. okay. And he said, do you want to see it? And I said, I would love to see it. He said, okay, drive around front. So I drive back around front. And I get out and we introduce ourselves to each other. And he said, you know, I haven't cleaned it yet, so don't judge it. I said, don't worry, I won't. And uh, I follow him inside. <clears throat> and there's this beautiful ramp 
right inside the door. And I would not have known this was an office. It just looked like a house. And um, there's like this side door in. And when I went in, there was this pretty little foyer with like a, you know, a receptionist desk. And I thought that was it at first. And he said, yeah. And then you, you walk back down this hallway and there's four office rooms. Mm. <laughs> and I mean, I just, I walked in and immediately it just felt right. You know, my spirit was just like on fire and it felt so homey and cozy with these wood floors and these like re- beautiful beams and uh, felt like a hug, you know, and I, I immediately just said, Oh, this is perfect. You know, <laughs> and he was like taken aback and he was like, well, that's good to hear, I guess, you know? And uh, so I said, okay, I, I need to talk to some people. I'm very interested. Can I be in touch with you? And he said, yeah, sure. And he was like, what would you be using this for? So I told him and he was like, huh, do you think people will come to that? <laughs> <laughs> good question. Good question. <laughs> I said, I, you know, I had a place and in my experience, I do think people will come to it. And I, he said, okay, we'll be in touch. And so I called, you know, the, the very kind couple who um, had offered before, but I hadn't talked to them for months, you know, so I didn't know if the offer still stood. And they said, yes, the offer still stands. And in fact, we're going to be in town this weekend. Hmm. Why don't Again, we all go- from Florida all the way up to from New Hampshire, <laughs> Florida, all the way up to New Hampshire. Uh, why don't we go see it together? I said, yes, let's do that. So, you know, it, it was actually on a Monday morning and, um, we went and saw it and took them inside and they both just immediately started crying and said, you know, I told them the story of how I had found it, how the shepherd led me there. And they said, yes, this is it. We'll put an offer in. And, uh, you know, that all took a few weeks. I kind of was waiting to hear. And on, I got the key on November 30th (laughs) and all of my regulars were very excited and went with me to the storage unit, got all the stuff out. And uh, I didn't have to pay on December 1st for the storage unit, (laughs) (laughs) which was another answer to prayer. And uh, so then kind of spent that month praying over it and setting it up and asking the Lord, you know, how he wanted the space to be and look. And uh, it opened kind of a soft opening uh, at the beginning of January and then kind of had been opening it each Friday night ever since. And it's been a huge blessing. So uh, right now, kind of working on getting the word out. And uh, at, at this point, I only have it open on Wednesday mornings from 10, no, 11 to uh, 12 noon, and then Friday nights from 7.30 to 10 p.m. Uh, for the public and or by appointment. So I am just praying for people who, and the Lord's assured me that there are people who will come to partner with me and open it up at other times so that more people have more opportunity to come and just spend time in prayer. Yeah, tell uh, tell the audience uh, exactly where it is. So if, if somebody does have an interest or know people that might have an interest, they can uh, spread mm-hmm. the news. So it's, what what's the name of that town again? And then where exactly is it? Yeah, so it's 48 Main Street. Unit two in Henniker. Henniker. Henniker, New Hampshire. Yes, and it's called the Living Room, and it's it's kind of a uh, on on the to the right of Daniel's Restaurant. Uh, it's kind of a side door. It's it's not right on, you know, it doesn't face the street. It's kind of parallel to the street, and uh, yeah, the the I have a website. It's www.thelivingroomhenniker.com, and yeah, so it's. It's you can find out more information on there as well. Yeah. And, Another uh, cool point on that is that God called her to put it next to, you know, in the town of New England College. And you did some research. Right. And what did you find about um, the presence of of anything Christian there? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> I was I was talking with I reached out to uh, a team member who just joined 24 seven prayer, who she's done, you know, campus ministry and been in higher ed, uh, her whole career. And, uh, she, you know, was get, I called her to see how I could get connected to the college. You know, if she wouldn't give me pointers and help me, help me know how to do that. She lives down South. And, uh, she said, well, let me, let me call and let me see kind of what they have and look into it and see if what ministries there you can get connected to. And cause I had already done my own research and couldn't find anything. And 
she called me and she said, Noel, there is nothing. They have no ministries on campus. They have no religious clubs, mm. nothing. Wow. And uh, nothing for the students. And she said, so if we can get connected there, it's going to be a work of God, just like every step of this of the way this has been. And I said, that's exciting to me. Let's do it. <laughs> I, he can do it. So, so yeah, cool. so we are, we're praying right now on how to get more connected and, and be a resource to uh, the college students there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Kathy and I, uh, we are in the middle of a series uh, called Hearing God's Voice. And, um, you know, your story, uh, first of all, it's just overwhelming. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. almost speechless. Uh, it's so much joy and it's beyond, you know, anything that we could imagine. Um, and it's such a beautiful testimony of hearing God's voice, mm -hmm. uh, of each step of the way uh, of, you know, and remember the Holy Spirit, we talked about the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to tell you of things to come, but what he does is alert us and then say, you know, pay attention and follow. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, when you got that offer, uh, from that couple from Florida, mm -hmm. it would have been real easy to say, okay, great, let's go sign the lease and let's go get it done. And God says, uh, no, <laughs> right. that's not it, you know, and okay, you know, and, and what, what it thrills me is that your beautiful heart to, okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> now what, you know, now what, you know, go, <laughs> go around the back. Well, there's nothing here, you know, now what, you know, and, um, and God is connecting dots and uh, you're in the you're at the very you know middle of this story mm -hmm. and you know and we know that there's going to be a lot more to the story mm -hmm. but it's not up to you it's up to following Definitely. Uh, and so we're you know we want to rejoice over you and pray over you and well we would uh, Kathy let's make sure that we you know in a couple months we have her back and let's let's keep up with the story uh, yeah, I thank, love that. Thank you. I love uh, that. Yeah, you know, it's been it's been an adventure, and I had begged him. I I want to hear your voice. I want to be on an adventure, but I'm naturally a planner, so this was hard. <laughs> right. This was hard to say. Like, no, I'm going to give you each step, and right. now it's it's been. You know, he was merciful to me. I ignored him, and he he <laughs> he persisted, and I'm I'm so grateful. I'm shocked that right. I have this privilege, but uh, it is one of those things where I'm like, I am not making any move or taking another step unless you tell me. I have many people who give me great advice about it and wonderful suggestions and I take them all to him, uh, you know, but I, I'm like, I'm only going to follow your voice with this because this is yours from start to finish. That's right. And I'm just excited to see what he's going to do. So yeah, I, I'm so grateful for this privilege of just getting to share what, how cool the Lord is yeah. and how right. fun. Yeah. And it's a great, um, it also is a great, um, uh, truth of, you know, when we think about God's will, we we all tend to think, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. uh, and God says, actually, <laughs> my will is about what I'm going to do. I'm inviting you to mm. to be the con yes. conduit of what I'm I'm up to, and uh, it's really about my kingdom work. And I'm joining, having you join my kingdom work, and uh, and it could be personal. You know, it doesn't have to be even this this grand of thing. It can be just here's what here's my steps for you right now you know and mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing uh that just overwhelming to me story of the, mm -hmm. the joy the beauty the power the amazing connectivity of what god mm -hmm. does you know to have you you know meet that guy at the back you know and it's just <laughs> yes. it's just over overwhelming you know so noel thank you so much we we want to pray over yeah, you and heavenly father we're uh we just are uh the, the glory, your glory is so overwhelming. We really have nothing to yeah. say. It's it's something mm -hmm. that that is special. Uh, mm -hmm. What a privilege uh, that she has to be drawn into this place, and you chose her because of the heart and the ability to hear and the ability to follow. And so we just pray that what she's experiencing, we would all understand that's your heart toward all of us. Uh, mm -hmm. That you want to do these magnificent things and and put things together that only you can do, and the joy of her experiencing that is, is overwhelming and we get to share in that. And so we just pray for favor, next steps. Uh, it'll be exciting to see what you're gonna do next, particularly at that college. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, the people you're gonna connect with is all because she had a heart to follow. 
and we thank you, praise you, and rejoice over her and pray, pray, pray blessing uh, over her and what you're, what you're doing in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Noel, and for sharing that story. I know, absolutely know, it is going to be a huge blessing to so many people. Um, so thanks mm -hmm. again, and thank you, Rich, for, yeah. for having us on here. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So listeners, if you have questions, send them in to us at questions at abideministry.com. And Noel, can you share one more time the website for your for the living room? You said yes, www.com the living room henniker.com great well thank you so much and if you have questions send them in to us we look forward to seeing you next time take yep. care we'll see you we'll see you in henniker <laughs> <laughs> see you soon please do yep. thank you for joining us for today's episode of come and see your podcast for truth in a world of chaos brought to you by living waters abide ministries Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.